So, Reese, um, Neil has said that you've had your best fall. Well, you know, what is it uh, just coming together for you? Huh? Do you feel like mm -hmm. you've played better now than you have at any other point? I feel like, you know, going into the off season after the season, I knew I had to uh, improve on a lot of things. And um, I knew where I stood, and me and Coach Brown had one of those sit-down heart-to-hearts, and I knew I had to get better in several things. And so I attacked winter workouts with Coach Mike and his staff. And, you know, the spring I got unlucky and pulled my hamstring and then got to play in the spring game. But uh, I think I – have gotten a lot faster and a lot stronger and I knew I had to do that in order to play and I think just building and stacking those days and years and stuff have definitely helped. You mentioned the spring injury I mean you may put that commitment to get better and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden that knocks you out for yeah. a while how frustrating is that? Oh very it was uh it knocked me down I was really frustrated at first and you know I'm not one of those guys that's going to feel sorry for myself and lay down. So I went right back to work the next day. You know, I was getting treatment two or three times a day, doing everything I could to get back. And it was a day-by-day -day feel, and, you know, I just eased back into it and was fortunate enough to, you know, practice the last week and play in a spring game. How are you taking care of your hamstring now? I uh, take care of it every day. Yes, yeah, sir. That's yeah. something that's like It's focus. just in the maintenance. Yeah, yeah, both of them actually, but, uh -huh. yeah, I've started that. Did you always – have you had that – before has that been an issue with you before with hamstring? So in high school, I I pulled that hamstring before actually, and then I hadn't had a problem with it here, and then I did it that in the spring, and then um, it's just been on maintenance pretty much ever since then. Have you had to alter the way you train, the way you work out to to protect it? No. Um, when I did it, of course, I had to right. you know watch out for it and go down a little bit of intensity and stuff, but no, nah, I picked right back up where I was. So no, there's no restrictions? Mm -mm, no, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, Reese, what prompted the sit down with Coach Brown? Um, I went in there just with a mindset, you know, how can I be better, you know, on the field, more importantly, and, um, you know, he's going to tell me straight up just because, um, you know, he's recruited me ever since I was sophomore in high school, and, um, you know, we had one of those conversations where it was, you know, Coach, I need to play more. And I'm playing a lot of special teams, but I want to play a lot more offense. And he told me what I had to do. And, you know, it was straightforward. And Coach Mike was in there as well. And he told me what I'd do as well. And so I attacked it every day and, you know, kept it in the back of my mind what I had to get done. Was it all physical stuff, like getting faster and stronger? Or was it more than that? Um, I'd say a little bit of it was. But also, you know, learning the game and being a smarter player is always, you know, a step that you can always improve. And, um, but a big part of it was just playing fast and not overthinking things. Did you know anything about Graham's offenses prior to him coming to WVU, and how do you think you fit in what he wants to do? A little bit. I knew it was an air raid offense, and he would like to throw it a lot. I knew that. And, um, you know, Coach Brown had pulled me aside and told me that he was going to hire Graham Harrell and told me a little bit about him. And I actually knew when he played at Texas Tech, I – watched him growing up a little bit and um so that was good and I feel like I fit in the offense very well you know he likes to throw it and likes to go four wide which is good for me were you same high school as Neil I think even same coach right because mm, yes came sir back. yeah so is that odd because you have a you know a longer relationship with him than a lot of others and probably know a lot of people that know him yeah of course so um like I said I knew coach Brown ever since like I actually knew him since my sophomore year of high school when he offered me at Troy. And, um, you know, we stayed in touch ever since. And then when he got the the uh, head coach here, he offered me his here as well. And, um, you know, I just respected him for, you know, always keeping in touch. And he kind of knew where I was coming from and what I'd been through from getting the same coach and playing in the same town and the same school. Same position, similar background. I mean, yeah. playing for a coach that's basically – uh, an older version of you. Yeah. <laughs> <Long ways. laughs> yeah. It was, uh, it's kind of crazy because my dad, when I was a little kid or maybe not even born yet, he'd always go to the high school games and watch Coach Brown play. And, okay. you know, there was always one of them things where everybody knew who the ball was going to, but they couldn't stop him. So. Do you have that same type of game yourself? I'd like to think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were also very good in basketball, but gave that up. Yeah. To come here was that hard? Because you could have probably set records that yeah. would be touched. So I was, I actually played on the varsity at the end of my eighth grade year, and 
started ever since my freshman year of high school. And I love basketball. Before I wanted to play, you know, football in college, I wanted to play basketball in college to, to start with. I wanted to be a basketball player. And I had some interest from schools and stuff. And um, I got to high school and played football and started liking it and received more interest for football. And, uh, you know, I had to sit down with my dad and stuff. And just based off my size, you know, I feel like I had a better chance of playing football at a higher level. So that's kind of where it came in at. Who's a guy uh, that's been around visiting uh, this week or the next couple of weeks, Ryan Switzer. Mm, yeah. You had a chance to pick his brain a little bit. I mean, I think yeah. body type, the whole deal, some similarities there. Oh, yeah. Switz is a – he's a great dude to start off with. Um, I pick his brain every day, you know, just the littlest things. Um, like we were talking today about leverage and DBs and the one-on-one -on -one reps and stuff and, you know, catching punts at the beginning of practice and, you know, stuff like that. But, yeah, I, I kind of model my game after guys like that, you know, just because we're the same size and, you know, like um, speed-wise and stuff like that. But he's definitely got some, you know – good wiggle to him and can get open one-on-one -on -one and, you know, create space for himself, which is, you know, good for guys like us in the slot. What about his um, advice on catching punts? I mean, he was one of the best ever doing yeah, in college history. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I don't know if he is the record holder in the college for punts, but he told me he had seven, should have had 11, four, got called back. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, the dude was a menace back there on punt return. And, you know, just he says it's all about your eyes and seeing the – punt come off the punter's foot and you know stuff like that it, there's so many ways you can break it down that I had no idea about when he told me and I was like wow and I guess too if you look your best punt returners it's usually one cut and go yeah that's all it is is make the first guy miss and get up vertical and field yep that's how I usually get get touchdowns that drill you guys did at the end of practice today catching punts with mm -hmm. people throwing stuff at you yeah. and uh, difficult. I mean, how do you keep your concentration when there are towels in your face? And uh, it's just, I love moments like that. I mean, I live for competition and stuff like that. So when all eyes are on me, I mean, that's that's what I like to do, and that's why I came here to play a big school. But you know, those coaches are just having fun and trying to make us earn it. You know, and um, it was actually kind of funny because they were actually hitting the ball with those cones and stuff, and the ball was going there which way. But it was a it was a good time. I would imagine the uh, towels and the cones hitting you is a little easier than a 200-pound uh, safety. Oh, yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> were you the eight teammates pick? You were Preston? Like who was going to bobble a ball or drop a ball? They did, yeah. That's why they were split down the middle. Coach Brown had decided which or which I used pick. Like making a list of, wait a minute, this guy's going to Preston's side. I don't, I don't really pay attention to it, you know. I know who's got my back and who doesn't, but okay. – you know, that's just all fun and games and um, who you think's going to win, I guess. So, whoever got your trust in. I knew I was I knew I knew was going to catch him, and I knew he was going to catch him too. So, I was like, we can sit here all day. I was like, I ain't going nowhere. New quarterbacks this year. Right. What, your adjustment to, to those guys, what do you think of Nico, JT, the guys mm -hmm. that are brand new? Um, of course, Nico came in the spring. He was new. And I think he's adjusted well. I think he's came a long way since the spring. Of course, I didn't really get to catch much from him because of the injury in the spring. And then um, JT, when he first got on campus, I actually had come back on our, you know, on our little break in May and, had, you know, thrown and caught with him. So um, it's nice catching from a veteran like that as well. You know, he's a very smart player and knows what he's doing and knows where to place the ball. So. And you guys are kind of under the gun a little bit in terms of timing. I mean, you've got to have you've had to speed it up in the summertime because you didn't have him in the spring. Yeah. And you've got a game coming up uh, on September first. Um, have you had that? Is there an urgency there to to get that timing where it needs to be? Mm -hmm. So, like I said, ever since he got here, you know, at the end of May, we've been throwing every other day, if not every day, even in the summer before we were doing OTAs and stuff like that. Even on Saturdays, we were throwing. So we were trying to get as much timing in with him as we could just to get the, like I said, timing down right and, um, you know, get what we have to do to get done. Of course, that's one part of it. Now you got a defense yeah. and the whole deal. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's it, – there's obviously still some room to go, but do you feel like it's coming around a little bit? With all oh, yeah, 100%. I feel like he's uh, – he makes really good decisions under pressure. Like I said, it's, you can tell he's a veteran back there, and, you know, you can feel it, makes good calls. And, mm -hmm. um like I said, push the ball where it needs to be.
From what we've seen, um, he seems like too like he's pretty good at feeling where the, the blitz is coming from yeah. and, and either making the right read or whatever. Is that what you see? Um, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes I don't really pay attention to the box because I'm out a little bit. Um, but, yeah, when I watch film, you know, and stuff like that, you can tell that, you know, he's – But he's got to communicate to you, though, if it's – you're the hot guy, right? Yeah, yeah, of course he does. So, I mean, if we got uh, – I don't know, we, if we got an option route or something, you right. know, he'll, he'll point or something, or I'll give like a, you know, cat call if that guy's blitzing or something, let him know if he's going in, let the tackle know. So – How's all that going? You know, and then there's a lot of nonverbal stuff that is involved in that too. Yeah. And that stuff kind of you have to play to. Yeah, it's kind of one of those one of the things where you just got to be a football player sometimes. Okay. You just got to know and you know feel out, and this is one of the things where feel the game out and be a football player really. Uh -huh. On top of returns, do you like special teams? You're on coverage teams and, and return team besides yeah. just being the returner. So I had, I had no idea how important special teams was before I got here. I I didn't play them in high school. I just did punt return in high school, and that was it. Um, our high school coach really believed that if you played both sides of the ball, you weren't playing special teams, you know. So when I got here, it was a kind of a slap in the face a little bit. But uh, once I got playing, I I love special teams because, like I said, I played offense and defense in high school, and you can't play. Or, I mean, you can play both ways. It's hard to play both ways in college. So playing special teams kind of kept me in the game. And kept me focused and stuff like that. So yeah, I love playing special teams. You use your safety background some. When oh you yeah. Tackle. I mean, does it 100%. still come back to you? Yeah, like, like I said, I was talking to a couple of defensive guys the other day, and we were doing a kickoff coverage. And I was like, this, this is my probably my favorite unit just because I don't get to tackle nobody anymore. So I was like, every chance I get to make a tackle, you know, that's always fun.